Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we finally see Bitcoin hit 50,000 US dollars. We're going to have a look at the price, what I've been looking at over the past week, do a recap of the charts on Bitcoin and touch on a few of the trades which we have looked at over the last couple of weeks. What we're doing there, whether we're selling, buying, what is going on. So if this is the first time you are seeing my channel, thank you for stopping by. My name is Jason. Subscribe button is down below. Hit that if you find some value from the channel and you want to be updated with cryptocurrency content, news, charts, and rotating our profits into other asset classes. If you find some value from the video, leave us a like down below if you're a returning subscriber or you just want to show support for the channel. Best, easiest, freest way to do that. All right, let's dive into the video. What I have up on the screen at the moment is the Investor Accelerator Group. You know, I've talked about it on the channel multiple times if you are a regular viewer. Last week, I was looking at Bitcoin hitting its 50% resistance and what I was doing. I wasn't looking at buying any more Bitcoin at that stage and I haven't done so for some time because, of course, we are getting well and truly into this bull market. That doesn't mean that I don't think n no one should be buying Bitcoin. It's just that looking at the cycles, we were buying it at the lows during the period of accumulation when no one else was talking about it. That's why I speak so much about staying with a particular market, even through a bear market, so that you can pick up on these bear market times to accumulate the asset. So we really dive into that a lot, especially within the course. So last week, we're looking at 50% hitting out at 48,000. And what am I doing here? Just my position, not financial advice. I'm already in a solid position. What I would do if I haven't got in at this point is wait to get a confirmation. Are we going to get a break above this level of the 50% resistance? Basically, that is the range. Nice, cleanly, uh, nice clean looking range here. The March low to the January top projected off the swing low. This is on a weekly chart. We're looking at macro stuff here. And then that range is projected up. So the 50% came out at 47,800. What we've seen since that point is a close above the 50% level. The volume is slightly increasing, which is a good sign, but it's not at any of those levels previously seen like we like we saw when we got a breakout of the 20,000. We did see a lot more increased volume. It's still a good thing. It is higher volume and the volume averages have been increasing. So that's something to take note of. Now from here, I think we will continue up. That's pretty well a given because the trend is up. We haven't seen a strong sign of a reversal yet. And the next target I'm looking at is either in the high 50s or somewhere around the 67,000. Now that's a long way from here. Uh, in terms of a dollar sense, it definitely sounds like a long way. But in terms of percentage, it's only about 36%. So there it is, 35 from where we are right now, 49,700 up to around that $67,000 level. So around that 35, 36% level, it sounds like a lot in dollars, but percentage, personally, I don't see it being worth the risk. And that's why I'm not buying any more Bitcoin at this stage. I want to see a healthy correction before diving into the market again. I think it's important to note that this cycle could be extra big bigger than we are anticipating. Now I've got a small article here, Bitcoin super cycle, maybe we're not on a four year cycle. And if you haven't heard of that before, there is a theory around Bitcoin going through four year cycles because of the halvening which happens every four years. Now we have a lot more money coming into the space plus the adoption of Bitcoin with institutions. So this could start to extend the cycle, especially when we have a lot more money coming in and a lot more people. I'm sure you've seen this sort of stuff before. What if Bitcoin goes from 0.01% of ownership to 1% of the world's population? What happens when $100 trillion of managed funds by institution begins to flow into Bitcoin? What could that do? It certainly won't be a 20 grand to 100 grand Bitcoin, maybe a 20 grand to a million dollar Bitcoin, but we'll have smaller cycles after that point. Let's have a look at the adoption curve to see if this is possible. The adoption curve is simply this graph here. It looks like a bell curve. Basically, we've got innovators. They're the first people into the space, 2.5% then the early adopters, then early majority, next late majority, and of course the laggards. Now, I think we've, we are in the early majority stage for this cycle. I think the last cycle, 2017, 
was the early adopters. And then prior to that, which is maybe a 2011 cycle in Bitcoin, were the innovators. Now, this could be the biggest cycle that we see, not only because it is obviously the early majority, but because this could be where the most money comes into the space at the, at the shortest possible time. Late majority could still be a hell of a lot of money, but the bulk of the money is in already, but it got in at earlier stages, which pushed the price a lot further in terms of a percentage gain. So the late majority could have the same money, but because we were already up so far, then the market cap, even if it was to double, isn't that big of a deal in terms of a percentage. So the risk begins to increase. So I think we're at this early majority stage and throughout this cycle, we could swing into the late majority or into the, the next cycle, whenever that may be. But for now, early majority seems to be where we're at based on institutions coming into the space, also based on S&P 500 companies purchasing Bitcoin, like we saw with Tesla buying $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin. And previous to that, why I think it's early adopters were, was 2017 is because you saw a lot of retail getting into the space. There wasn't anything in the way of businesses, institutions, funds, etc., getting in at that point. So this chart needs to be looked at in terms of whether it's the money, the overall volume of money coming into the space, or it's the volume of people, the number of people. And I think it's probably better to look at an adoption curve in terms of money in the sense for uh, Bitcoin, because that's gonna give us different levels of percentage gains. If it's just the number of people, they could all just be coming in with a dollar or 10 bucks. And that's not really gonna push the price like it would if we saw massive institutions coming in, putting in billions of dollars at a time. So early majority, we're only gonna know this after the fact, but thinking about it, looking at it, seeing what the news is coming out, checking out the charts, seems like we're in this stage of early majority. While I'm recording, we've just hit $50,000 again. So we've already hit it once. This is probably the second or third time that we've come through that number of 50 grand. Nice to have it on camera. And from this point, we've looked already at where the next levels will be or could be. And I've got a level of around that 67,000. And that's using the major range from the March low to where we currently are. So that is a longer term target. It could happen very quickly. We know that it's Bitcoin. But the other target I'm looking at is using the range from the uh, September low, which we saw after the breakout of the triple top, one, two, three tops, and then the retest. So I'm using this range first as a closer target, just in case we don't see the price get there. Uh, next price target from this point is around the 54,000. But following that is obviously 60,000 is a nice psychological number, but 100% of this range projected from the previous swing low is at around $61,000. So it's not that far away, but in terms of news headlines, media headlines, YouTube, any sort of headlines, 60,000 sounds like a fantastic number. We've already seen 50,000 now. Now it's gonna be on to, can we get to 60? And so these numbers just continue to escalate, but the percentages get smaller and smaller. So from a $50,000 Bitcoin to 60, we're only looking at 20% return. The risk really does increase from this point. So that's where, where I'm at for Bitcoin. Personally, I'm not looking at it as something that I want to invest in again at the moment. I've already got a big position already. The risk is getting higher at this stage because we haven't seen a pullback and the prices are just well and truly up there, but the percentage returns don't seem like they're there like we would see in say something like Ethereum or the altcoins which we're trading, which leads me over to Ethereum. Ethereum on the daily chart is uncertain. We've just taken out the previous low on the dip that we saw a couple of days ago on that epic live stream. If you didn't catch it, six hours worth. I don't know if you wanna go back and watch that, but we're looking at the dip here and now we're in an uncertain trend because we have higher highs, lower lows. Overall, I think Ethereum is still going to head up. Obviously, we see Bitcoin heading up, so that is going to help us out in the dollar value price. But in terms of Ethereum versus Bitcoin, it could be a good entry time because we're seeing it pull back. So let's take a look at that chart as well. So this is the ETH BTC chart. We are seeing it drop away from the double top that it broke out of. So that's not a great sign at the moment. We've had a top here and another top here. You could argue that this was a triple top, one here, one here, and another here. But in terms of major moves, one, two, and we're beginning to break down. 
Personally, I'm not going to get too worried on Ethereum unless we begin to break down past these lows set just under the 3%. So 0.03 of a Bitcoin. Coming back to the 50% level is fine, which is 0.034. And then also coming back to the 38%, which is a 61% drop from the top. That's not just a measured move of a percentage. This is a Fibonacci range, and we're just looking at a 61% drop within this range. And that's still perfectly fine to maintain the integrity of the bull market on Ethereum versus Bitcoin. So somewhere around the 0.031 and 0.035 level, to me, looks like another good entry. So Ethereum is still one that I am considering purchasing more of, I have done in the past. It is getting late in the US dollar stage of Ethereum USD, but in terms of an ETH versus Bitcoin trade, it still looks reasonably healthy considering our targets are well and truly up in the 8% range, if not higher. And I personally, not financial advice, I think it's a good play against Bitcoin to improve my Bitcoin value. One of the safer plays out of the altcoins. Speaking of altcoin trades, Poker starter is one of those that we were on at a dollar. Currently sitting close to $7. This thing has skyrocketed. It is getting wild crazy. It's definitely one that I want to take some profits on at this point, even though there has not been a swing back. So we look for swings to enter and exit trades. This market has just continued to go straight up for many, 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 many days now. The last time we saw a real swing low was way back here in February, early February. But in terms of a day down, we see $2.07, $2.05. That's the low here. So for poker starter, we have gone up. We're going to measure it from the 9th of February to our current day, eight days in a row. Now I know from GAN rules, if anyone follows GAN or has heard of GAN rules, markets can go between, there's a seven to 10 day rule. And so generally, not always, but there's a high probability within seven to 10 days in a in the same direction of the trend as the market trends. So we have to be within a long-term trend as well. Within seven to 10 days, we can expect to see a reversal day. Now that's just a reversal, a, a pullback day. Doesn't mean that it's the end of the trend, but if we continue to follow this market, maybe as a safe exit strategy, we continue to trade our stops underneath the low of the day. And if we understand that, that markets can reverse within a seven to 10, 10 day period, maybe there's a day down, maybe there's two days down, maybe we keep it a day previous to where we currently are. So what does that look like on the chart? Say for example, we see today's bar straight down. Now we have a day down. Maybe the next day is down again, but we still haven't broken through these lows here. So $4 could be a safe exit target to tell us that the trend is reversing. So this is just a way to continue tracking the market, keep your gains in check and make the most out of the upside. What happens if we see the next day, it starts to trend up again, up again, up again, and away we go up to 10, 12, $15. We've been able to maintain a safe distance from the market, keep our profits in check, and still get on the upside of a potential big bull move. This is already pretty massive, and I think many people would be pretty happy with a $6 profit per share when they got in at a dollar, obviously per crypto. So six bucks, around five, 600%, depending on where you got in, where you're getting out. It's a fantastic move nonetheless. So that's one of the coins that we've been following on the channel and got in at around a dollar. That's my update for Bitcoin and how I'm seeing the market. $50,000 we've just hit. That's how I'm trading it, what I'm looking for. That's Ethereum. I think there's a good potential in Ethereum versus Bitcoin, obviously to increase our Bitcoin holdings, but also make US dollar gains uh, using Ethereum plus that was a look at PokerStarter, one of our major fantastic trades that we were looking at over the last few weeks. If you enjoyed that, let me know. Hit that like button down below. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and the bell notification icon so you can see the content as it comes up. If you want to stay in touch, Instagram, YouTube. Instagram, I go daily Q&As. You can go over there, ask your questions, and I'm putting it up through stories. So check that out. If you want to know more about the Investor Accelerator, there's a link in the description down below for a limited time, still 40% off, just a couple left to go. Otherwise, we'll be full on this Investor Accelerator for this period. For 
For buying and selling crypto, there's a link to SwiftX for the Aussies down below. Use that to get your $10 free Bitcoin. And for the international guys, Binance, link down there as well. You get trading fee discounts using that link down below. That does me for the video. I'll catch you guys at the next one. I hope you enjoyed that update for Bitcoin, Ethereum and Pokestarter. Until then, have more fun to get more done.